Good evening, Axolots. Good evening to your parents. Good evening to your friends, if you have any. Good evening to everyone, except for Singapore. Not Singaporeans. Good evening to Singaporeans, but the entire country of Singapore itself. So most of you may know this already. I am Malaysian, one of the many children included in the Great Divorce of 1965, when Singapore packed their bags and left Malaysia forever. Now at the time we were like, ha, good luck surviving without us. Where are you even gonna get water from? And now that it's been 57 years, I can safely say that we are not thriving from this divorce, not one bit. In terms of economics,、uh, we have no economics. In terms of recognition, someone once asked me if Malaysia was inside Singapore. Really, the most we have going on is food. In 2018, however, I met a friend through Amino, which I know sounds like a, a thousand red flags already, but we bonded over art and a comic series we both really liked, and this friend happened to be Singaporean. At the time, we were both 14 years old, but we prevailed, and after four years, we are still very close friends to this day. Well, as close as someone can be without、uh, ever meeting in real life or even seeing each other's faces. Which is why I decided to travel to Singapore to find them and stay in their house for one night. Extremely safe, no danger at all. I'm a great role model. Okay, but to be fair, I didn't go all the way just to visit them. I also went to visit my brother, but no one cares about him. Therefore, I will be taking you to the great land of a giant Malaya, introducing you to the experiences there, the food, etc. Before we reach our final destination. Let us begin. So first, instead of getting a flight ticket, my dad decided to take one for the team and drive us all the way to Singapore. I packed my bags and off we went at 5 a.m. in the morning, ready to conquer this new world. As the universal rule goes for the youngest family member, I was banished to sit at the very back with all the luggage. At least the back of this car was very considerate, though they have cup holders. Very convenient in case I need to throw up somewhere from how bumpy the back seat is. I get incredibly motion sick. Who thought this was a good idea? At 7 a.m., we had a toilet break. I bought some snacks, including these fried fish cakes and tiny M&Ms. Hot take, but tiny M&Ms solo the normal-sized ones by a long shot. According to my mathematics,、uh, tinier means I can contain more of it in my mouth at once, meaning a larger surface area, meaning more crunch to even out the chocolate inside. I mean, try. Okay, I'm on. More plan. Then we had breakfast inside a Chinese kopitiam, where I ate my bread dipped in eggs. <laughs> If you haven't tried this before, I definitely recommend it.、Uh, make sure you dump soy sauce in it and then follow it up with hot Milo. And also make sure the Milo is served in this specific cup. It makes the drink taste way better. Trust me. Oh, what's that? There's no science behind it. I don't care. At 10 p.m., we finally entered the bridge that would lead us inside of Singapore, which wasn't too crowded. The same can't be said, however, for the bridge from Singapore to Malaysia.、Uh, is there an apocalypse going on? Why the hell is everyone evacuating? An hour later, we finally arrived at our destination, and I was feeling very pumped to take my first step into the land of Singapore again after a long while. That is until my mom forgot me in the back of the car. <laughs> Behold the first step into this land, and I was officially only thirty minutes away from my friend. Now. To rate the food in Singapore, first of all, I got this chicken chop with a random blue drink that I only got because it was blue. My kidney is in shambles as we speak. Not bad, a solid seven out of ten. Would have been an eight if not for the assassination attempt on my life. Singapore knew I was there, and they were trying to get rid of me. I found in my food not rat poison, not gunpowder, but something far more life-threatening. Singapore's trying to kill me. A singular ant. Bloop! It's on the table now. Oh well, extra protein, I guess. After that was yet another excruciatingly long car ride to finally see my brother. He has his own channel. If you want to know more about him, I recommend not. I am by far the more superior sibling. Yeah, he got into a nice university in Singapore, studying mechanical engineering with a scholarship. 
But meanwhile, <laughs> my art teacher once called me very skilled. So who's the real genius here? <laughs> Like I said, the real genius here. Then we went sightseeing a little bit. We got to this hive place, which looks like a bunch of bamboo steamers stacked on top of each other. And I came to the conclusion that my feet ache horrendously and I have little to no stamina left after the pandemic. But it was really cool inside and it was a really nice experience overall. Then came dinner, where we had these crabs that were so mouth-watering. So drool inducing, so yumper dumper umpaliciously juicy like my ass. It was a great meal overall, 10 out of 10. I am actually also quite allergic to crabs, but I eat them anyways because I like looking God in the eyes while riding the shoulders of death. After that, I showered and it was the end of day one. Only one more day left before I could finally meet Spawn. The second day, I dressed myself in this black shirt with a necklace from one of my previous videos. On this day, I wanted to get a gift for my friend and their family for letting me stay over. In other words, I want to suck up to their parent because I have a deep craving for the validation from random adult figures in my life. Like the genius I am, I forgot to film the gift I got, but it was basically this really good popcorn. Get the caramel or macadamia nut flavor, I swear to you, it puts all other popcorn to shame. Then I had lunch at the world's first Michelin star ramen store. Did not fact check that, they could very well be lying. I am just inclined to believe them because it was written in very big fancy font with light. The food was really good though, uh. I ordered this crab spaghetti. Spaghetti? I ordered this crab ramen my, while my mom got the truffle flavor one. She was basically hunting down the truffles. And then I had this ice cream sandwich from an old lady stall outside the mall. It was lightly raining and there were pigeons around. I felt like a main character in that moment. I felt like Emily in Singapore. I also took a picture of this sex toy shop. <laughs> After that, we went home and there was officially just 12 hours left before our meeting. My friends Spawn and I were on the same wavelength when it came to dramatic first meetings. You see, I've watched failed compilations of friends meeting and hugging each other. I've seen the way some of them literally launch midair and backflip onto the ground due to bad hugging tactics. So we wanted to make sure that our hug was perfect. Gentle, soft, heartwarming. And we did that by working out the logistics of it for about 20 minutes. Eventually, we decided to just improvise and went to bed full of excitement and nerves. Soon after a few hours of drifting off, I awoke again and it was T-1 hour before I could finally meet my online friend of 4 years. I'm a bit worried, you know, just to be completely frank, because what if I'm not as funny as I am online? What if I'm not as funny without those cursed stickers that I use to emphasize my funniness? I can't do jump cuts in real life. Why do I look like a mushroom? But I guess we're just gonna have to see. I got this vanilla body mist because I really want to smell good when I meet someone for the first time. My mom hates it. She says it smells like food and she doesn't like when people smell like food. She says it makes me smell like a bakery. Isn't that a good thing? It's just occurred to me that this friend of mine could very well be a serial killer and I would have no idea. But if someone kills me, I would want to smell nice when they do it. As per how most children are when meeting Asian parents for the first time, this is my peace offering. On the drive there, I was ecstatic! A thousand thoughts ran through my head. Would they like how I am in real life? Because I tend to be extra annoying. Would my gigantic 6 foot 5 structure scare them away? Is it possible to run from one end of Singapore to the opposite end in under 24 hours? But all those thoughts vanquished when we finally pulled up to the wrong house. Wrong house? <laughs> <laughs> 
We figured it out eventually though. What the <laughs> it was so amazing to finally meet them in real life. They told me I smelled like cinnamon rolls, so take that mom. You were right about me smelling like a bakery. But that was a positive comment. Oh no, I really am stuck in a burning building or whatever I do. <laughs> I won't be showing much of their house obviously for privacy reasons, but I relished in their dog that acted like a cream-colored, happier, less gremlin version of my own dog, Abby. Then we did a height check, you know a lot of you don't believe that I'm 6 foot 5. Uh, as you can see, I am incredibly tall and powerful. As mature 18 year olds, we decided to then hang out around the playground to assert our dominance on the children there. Fun story, when we were there, a really old grandpa and his probably 6 year old granddaughter came along to play. Now obviously since he was old, he couldn't really keep up or play with her all that much. And according to all the moral lessons I was taught as a child, this was the perfect time for the both of us to invite this kid to play so that she can have a nice evening and the grandpa can feel relieved watching from afar. We did not end up doing that. What happened was neither of us had the balls to ask the kid if she wanted to play with us. But we also didn't want to leave because we felt bad. So, it's, so essentially, both of us were just acting like weirdos staring at this 6 year old at the playground for about an hour trying to communicate with her through telepathy to come join us as we swung around the equipment rapidly. You know, you know, in my defense, and I need you guys to back me up on this one. It would make so much more sense for Spawn to be the one to ask the kid over because Spawn had a, like a very sweet face, Spawn had like nice long hair, wearing a pink hoodie. Can you imagine me trying to call a toddler over while looking like a failed delinquent malnourished teenage boy? Imagine this, okay? Imagine this. Hey kid, come play with us. No, that's weird! But we refused to walk away. So I think the grandpa started to get bad vibes from us because he was frowning at us a lot and then just took her and left. Wonderful, I, I love doing good deeds. Also, another reason we didn't dare to invite her over was because the both of us were scared of getting rejected by a six-year-old. It hurts more when it's a small child rejecting you, okay? The sting stings much worse. Anyways, we had a lot of fun together, watched a scary movie. I also almost lost Spawn as a friend because I decided to play a cute little prank. <laughs> My laugh was somehow scarier than the movie. It was so surreal to finally see them in real life and watch their facial expressions as they talked and actually touch them. In fact, they were so amazed by it that they kept poking me with a chopstick to make sure I was real. The next morning, however, we had to bid our goodbyes because I could only stay one night. And also, uh, one after our I Love Spawn, I got photographed by a bunch of random tourists because they treated me as part of their tourist attraction because I was Chinese. Yeah, that was a bit weird. <laughs> we visited Ho Par Villa. It's basically like a theme park containing over a thousand statues depicting scenes from Chinese mythology, folklore, legends, etc. What the fuck? Uh, and then there was also just this random statue of liberty that was placed there for no reason amongst the figures of gods. So here's when the problem came. As I was there, I noticed a group of other foreigners. So they were dressed in Buddhist monk robes. Not unusual, but I think they probably were just wearing that for fun and they weren't actually Buddhist monks. I saw them eyeing me a little bit for like a while, and then they called me over. And all I heard was the word photo. So what I assumed was that they wanted me to help them take a group photo. Imagine my surprise here <laughs> when they started pulling out a selfie stick and just like grabbing me and taking a picture with me. And then some other of their friends from the site were yelling at me to take my mask off. Interesting! <laughs> you know how in unexpected fearful situations like this, uh, you either fight or flight? Well, I introduce you the third thing. 
Comply and do what they ask you because you are confused, awkward, and scared. And then run to your parents about it. Yeah, that's what I did. So eventually they let me leave and I caught up to my dad. When I told him what happened, um, he was like, Whoa, that was weird. Why'd you, why'd you take a picture with them? And I was like, I don't know. So then I told it to my mom and she was like, what the fuck? Yeah, I was uncomfortable with it, so she stormed over to them and asked them politely to delete the photographs. And to their credit, they were very like okay with it. They even went to the recently deleted folder without prompt to show us that they completely deleted it. But while they had their gallery open, I just saw like rows of photographs of Chinese people. I don't know if they were Chinese, could have just been people who shared like East Asian features. But either way, Kinda odd. So when I told this story to my friends, uh, one of them said that it might have been because they were treating me as part of the tourist attraction. Like, oh my god, a Chinese person in a theme park full of Chinese mythology? <gasps> By Joe! I don't know, I feel like they probably didn't have like really bad intentions or whatever. I just felt uncomfortable with it, but we got it solved. I personally just realized that I have a very bad issue with saying no. Oh well, I'll work on that eventually. So that's the end of the trip. Really enjoyed the additional 13 hour drive to get back home. Very relaxing, not caustic inducing at all. Hope you all enjoyed this video. Spawn, this is dedicated to you bro. I love you bro. I miss you and your dog. I'm acting as if we don't talk every day, but so hope you all enjoyed this little traveling vlog. Now, as much as I make fun of Singapore, it's actually really nice there and I'd love to go again soon. So this is a shout out to all my Singaporean viewers as well. You guys got the better end of divorce. Love y'all. Bye bye.